Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sinze Lukuhle Nkabini and today I'll be talking about the frequent questions I get asked by people with regards to me being homeless. So the first question that they usually ask is what did you eat? whilst you are on the streets so this video will basically be talking about that I need to shave I apologize for this scruffy face but I haven't gotten the time to shave it and hopefully I'll do it on Monday because today it's Friday yeah I'm in the rural area, so I left most of my stuff at home in town. Anyway, so what do you eat when you are on the streets? Firstly, I was on the streets. I was homeless in Durban. How I became homeless, you'll find that out once I reach a 1,000 subscribers. <laughs> or I almost said 100,000 subscribers. You'll find that out once I reach 1,000 subscribers. How did I end up homeless in Dublin? Okay. So what do you eat on the rough, scruffy streets of Durban? Well, number one, if you're smart, you collect cans, you collect plastic bottles, you collect plastic, and what else? Yeah, cans, plastic bottles and plastic. You take that to the recycling center and you basically earn, I think maybe 20 rand or 30 rand. Yeah, depends on when you send it because the prices differ when it's December and January. But throughout the year, it's usually like 16 rand for one kilo for cans. And then for plastic, it's like four rand one kilo. Yeah. And f for plastic bottles, it's four rand one kilo. And for just plastic, yeah. you know that plastic that you throw away once you're done carrying your groceries? For that plastic, it's just two rand per kilo. So you do end up with 20 something rand. But you can but you can also collect boxes and for one kilo of boxes it's it's eight rand it depends on which recycling center you send it to so that's one way of getting money whilst you're on the street and then buying food by collecting everything that rich people <laughs> throw away or how people pollute the earth by collecting all of that and then taking it to the recycling center and then earning money but you don't earn, you don't earn a lot it's usually like 20 something rand but it's enough to feed you because per day I would only spend like 16 rand and then the rest of the money I would save. So it is something. So that's how I used to get food. Or how I used to feed myself through recycling. Another way that you can get food whilst you're on the street or whilst you're homeless is through begging for money. That's how you can get you beg for money, then you take that money, and then you go buy food. And I'm not talking about groceries, no. You go to a Pakistani tuck shop, or spaza shop, and you buy what you can afford in there. There's no going into pick and pay, or shop right, or Woolworths. There's none of that. You go where you are welcomed, where you are allowed to enter. Okay. 
So that's how you get food. That's another way, by begging for money. So when someone comes up to you and asks, and asks you for like two rand, one rand, some of them buy food with that money. And uh, of course, I mean, we're not going to lie and not state the truth that some also do buy drugs with that money. But for those that do buy food, you basically help them by help them help them by giving them that one rand or that fifty cents or that two rand or that five rand. Okay. So that's another way. That's number two. Number three uh, number three you can go and stand by the robots and I know you'll have seen people standing by the robots begging for food or begging for money that's another way you can get food whilst living on the streets in Durban I don't know about other places I don't know, I don't know about other cities but in Durban that's how you can get food also number three by going to the robots and begging them I keep looking this way and that way. Okay, the camera is this way, but I keep looking that way. Okay, this is my first video. Be patient with me. So, when you're standing by the robots, obviously when the cars stop, some people, they will give you money, but also some people will give you home-cooked food. Some people will, eat, will literally go to a shop, buy a whole bag of groceries, and then come to the robots and hand those groceries to you. So that's how you get food whilst you are living on the streets. That's the third way of getting food whilst you're living on the streets by begging at the robots. Number four. How do you get food on the streets? Well, you can also go door to door knocking or pressing the buzzer at the gate. Now when you go knock or press the buzzer at the gate, they might ask you what do you want? And then you can state that, okay, you, you're literally begging for at least money or food. And if they want to, they can literally step out and give you something. But they are not forced to give you anything. The residents of those communities where you can actually go door to door and knock are not forced to give you anything. But if, from the goodness of their heart, if they want to, they will give you. But that's also in Durban. In Durban. I don't know about other cities. Number five. And this is what used to also happen to me as well. Number five. In Durban, in predominantly... Muslim areas where there are a lot of Muslims. You can literally just by walking by, they literally they literally just place a loaf of bread next to the street, or at the or at a specific corner, or they'll place like a whole packet filled with home cooked food, and they put it at at a corner where that road is has a lot of people walking by so they put it there of course okay let me not say this okay let me say this of course people that are working will not take that food because i mean it's food that's placed on the floor the only person that will take that food is someone that's homeless however through my own experience i did notice that a lot of people that are working are hungry and they are battling to meet their daily necessities. So they also now start taking, they have also now started taking that food that's usually placed for homeless people. Okay. So that's also another way that you can get food in Durban through the kindness of some people who will literally cook a whole meal, package it in those. Um, Rama containers or stock containers they'll put it in there and then put it in a plastic packet 
tie the plastic package up and then go place it at a corner that has a lot of people walking by they'll put it there or they'll just buy bread they'll go and put excuse me they'll go and place that loaf of bread where a lot of people walk by or what else yeah yeah that's all they'll literally just go and place it there so that's another way that you can get food whilst you're homeless and on the streets in Durban. Remember I said Durban. I don't know about Johannesburg or Cape Town. I don't know about all those areas. But predominantly Durban, that's how you can get food. So basically, people in Durban usually feed the homeless. <laughs> They usually, they usually feed the homes. I mean, let's not lie. They do. You know? Because on some days, I, for me personally, I used to save a lot of money by not even buying food with my own money. So if I get like 30 rand from the recycling center, I literally save that whole 30 rand. And then all I need to do is just walk by near those corners where I know that food will be placed like near yeah, which streets are uh, like for instance in Springfield in Overport yeah those areas that predominantly have Muslims yeah those are the areas the way I used to get food so if you are currently homeless right now that's how you can get food in Durban where are the recycling centers? There's a recycling center in the CBD in Durban. There are probably like what three or four within the CBD in Durban. If you ask around, people will let will let you know. You can ask anyone; they will let you know where you can get a recycling center. And and I'm sure everyone is wondering, well, why am I now telling? homeless people where they can get recycling centers or where they can get food. Well, since I don't drink and I don't smoke, I used to save all of my money. And since I used to save all of my money, I used to also have money to enter an internet cafe. And in order for you to enter an internet cafe, you just have to be clean. You just have to wash your clothes. That's all. And an hour, one hour, in Durban is five rand. Just to get internet, one hour, it's five rand. So if I'm going to spend like 15 rand, I can literally get three hours. And with those three hours, I know that I am going to go on YouTube, watch a plethora, a lot. I watch a lot of YouTube videos. And just distress because most people that use drugs on the street they are trying to run away from depression they are trying to run away from it so in order for them to run away from it they use drugs however if you are sober the depression can literally kill you so in order for the depression not to end your life what you need to do is to choose something that's not going to hurt you physically like drugs yeah choose something that's not going to hurt you physically and one way and something that I chose was watching YouTube whilst being homeless I used to just pay 15 rand be on that computer for three hours and just relax my mind and just distress. So yeah, so if you are homeless right now and you are seeing this video, don't worry, everything will get better. You are going to survive this. If I can survive it, you can survive it as well. And I know some people are like, how did you get on the street? We will, I will do a video regarding that once I reach 1,000 subscribers. <laughs> once I reach 1,000 subscribers, 
then I'll tell you how I got to be home. So how I ended up home. Yo, the English. How I got to be home. How I ended up being home. So yeah. Yo, it's been 15 minutes. So yeah. Until next time. Please subscribe, like, and share. Yeah. Shop.